If you're bothered by sin, keep being bothered by sin. Will God forgive you for multiple sins? I mean, the sins that you're constantly struggling with, whether it is something with some sort of addiction, maybe it's something sexual. You're struggling with a lustful sin, pornography. Uh, maybe you are being promiscuous, either with the same sex or the opposite sex. And yes, this is a struggle for even for some Christians who are desiring to come out of that lifestyle, but there still might be this lingering struggle those who have anger issues, those who have other issues, things dealing with something that happened to them in the past and is showing back up, not being able to forgive, all of those different things. What do you do if you keep falling for the same sin over and over again? Because at some point in time, you even find yourself getting tired of having to say, Lord, I'm sorry for the same sin. I don't want to have to keep saying I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I'm sick and tired of saying, God, I'm sorry. I want to get past that. And what naturally will happen is you might even begin to question, am I really saved? Because after all, what Christian has to struggle with sin? Well, can I be honest with you? Every Christian, just like everybody else. Here are the people that sin. Let me just run down the list of the folks who sin. There are those like yourself who are Christian who sin and it bothers them. There are also those who profess to be Christians who sin and will act as though they don't sin. Then there are those who profess to be Christians who don't care about their sin. And then there are other people who aren't Christians who sin and could care less. Those are really the four categories. You happen to be, hopefully, in the right category, the category that you are bothered by your sin. But can I tell you something? Something kind of comforting is that you're not alone. As a matter of fact, if we go to the Bible, Paul had his struggles as well. Starting in verse 15, for what I am doing, I do not understand, for I am not practicing what I would like to do, but I'm doing the very thing that I hate. I can't stand this thing. My, maybe it's pride. Paul's issue that he tells us about is his pride, boastfulness. And so what does he decide to do? He decides to boast on how, he, how good God has been, how God has delivered him from certain things. But Everyone has an issue, including Paul. Notice what Paul is saying. He's saying, but if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing that the law is good. So now no longer am I the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. So Paul's acknowledging that he, just like everyone else, because we, we still have this flesh. We still have to deal with this skin. All of this, we were delivered on the inside, but what will never be delivered will be this flesh, which is why Paul says that we should have or we should not let sin have dominion or mastery over us, but we should subdue it. And so we, we continue to grow and push forward so that we will have less and less sin. You will never be, as long as you're on this earth, sinless. But as we say before, you will sin less. And so what does Paul say? He says, for I know nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. In other words, I want to do good, but oftentimes the wanting to do good isn't followed by the actual doing. Is that a problem? Well, it could be. Look what he says, verse 19 says, for the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I'm doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. In other words, there is this, this fight, this battle, this constant fight. As a matter of fact, if you are a Christian, I can promise you that you have gained the attention even more so of the demonic realm. The enemy wants to come after you. What he really wants, if he cannot keep you from going to heaven, he would like you to live on this earth in a defeated fashion before you get there. And unfortunately, we've got a lot of people who are just struggling, in many cases unnecessarily. Some folks are struggling because they're actually not believers, but there needs to be at the very least a struggle, a tension. Because if you find yourself sinning and there is no remorse, there's nothing that bothers you on the inside, well then, Houston, we've got a problem. But if there is some sort of problem, that at least indicates that there is some sort of conviction. Paul in verse 23 says, I see a different law in the members of my body waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my which is in my members. He said, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other with my flesh, the law of sin. He says, there's nothing good in me except except the spirit. That's what's going to deliver us. Because if we do this one thing, 
That is, if we recognize our sin and then fall on him. There's a passage that Jesus brings up. I won't go to, but I'll just kind of mention it in Luke 7, where this woman who has all these sins, and he said, he, he poses a parable or a story to Simon, not the, 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 the disciple, but this Pharisee named Simon. And he says to him, two people owe money. One owes a lot, one owes less, and both are forgiven. Who will love the person that forgave them the most? He says, I suppose the one that has been forgiven the most accurately stated. Jesus states that he who was forgiven much will love much. And the person who is going through, notice the woman there in this picture. She is broken. She is down. She's bothered by her sin, but she's still focused on worshiping the Lord. And that's how you can know, one, that you're a Christian, because when you sin, it should bother you. And there's still this desire, this fixation in, inwardly of you worshiping the Lord, of you going to him. Matter of fact, let me just give you how David puts it in Psalm 51. He says, cleanse me. Matter of fact, let's go to the very beginning. Let's start in verse one. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. God, I want to stop sinning. I've got this problem, this issue, and I don't like it. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. That's the key. Acknowledging the fact that I've got these sins that I'm by. There are some folks that don't ever acknowledge the fact that they do sin, or especially even publicly. They will have you believe that there's nothing wrong with them. They're okay. But you, on the other hand, you've got issues. He says, verse four, against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. So he understands the kind of fallenness that he is born with. But look what he says in verse seven. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He says, make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. He says, goes on to say, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast or some verses might say a right spirit within me. His point is, I want to be fixed of this. So I want to draw closer to you because the closer you get to him, whatever the issues that you're struggling with, the further they get away. We're not going to deal with and confront the sin. We're going to deal with and confront God. Let God, my closeness with him, be the reason and be the only way that I can get rid of this sin. But notice there has to be a brokenness, a contriteness. That's what he wants. The sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite heart. He wants to know, you need to know, that yes, I've struggled with whatever the different sins, and I'm tired of it. Well, that indicates, it should indicate that there's a brokenness, a contriteness in your inwardly, and that the only person that can fix it is who you go to. If you're constantly going to your friend or the self-help books or YouTube or the internet for your, for your help, well, then that might be a strong indication as to who you're not looking to. But if you go to God, that's a good indication, one, that you're acknowledging your sin, but then two, who the help where the help is coming from. So I would like to encourage any and everyone, really all of us who struggle with sin. Some struggle with it from time to time. Some struggle with it a little bit more than others. Some struggle with it every now and then. Sin is an issue that's ever present with us on this earth, all the different temptations. And so my encouragement is just to do this one thing. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're bothered by sin, keep being bothered by sin and keep going to the one who can fix this, who can alleviate it. The more that you worship him, the more that you draw close to him, the more that you focus on him, I can promise you this. And I'm not a prophet. I can tell you what I know. And I can tell you what the book says. You draw close to him. One, the enemy will flee. But watch your relationship with him grow and watch sin decrease in your life. Amen.